So we're back with Tizre. They've got a new album, This Ain't What You Wanted, which is out on Monday, the 18th of April. Now, we caught up with you guys round about this time last year, which seems such a long time ago, uh, with your previous release, Ho previous release, Hope Over Destruction. And from what I've seen from your downloads and your streams, it's doing really well at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I'm really pleased. I mean, we, everyone that contributed to that album, you know, we're over the moon with the result uh, from that. You know, it sort of exceeded our expectation and certainly the record label's expectation. So we're very proud of it. You know, we've had some great feedback and as you say, you know, lots of streams of downloads. So that's really encouraging. And of course, has been the uh, motivation and impetus to, you know, work on this, uh, on this uh, next project. As you rightly say, it comes out on April the 18th. Yeah, so what's different with these new songs compared with the, the last ones you were doing? And I wanted to kind of go back to my roots and, 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 and really focus on the sort of electronic pop rock element of the songs and keep that very consistent in every song uh, that's been written and produced. Uh, so right from the writing stage, the demo stage, right through to the final production stage, you know, had a very tight brief in terms of, you know, this is the sound that I want, this is the sound that needs to be created, and of course, in the production values, uh, you know, giving that sort of overtone of real good thumping electronic pop rock that's not only commercial but very accessible to the listener. So I guess reading a broader, a broader range of um, um, audience that are kind of into those three genres, you know, all at once. So that was principally the, the main reason why uh, we, you know, I and, and, and the rest of the con contributors, musicians on the album decided to do that. And, uh, you know, we're really pleased with the outcome. And I think we've really sort of tapped into that kind of uh, three base genre uh, vibe going on in, e you know, in every song. So yeah, very pleased. Excellent, fantastic. Now, I believe you recruited uh, two producers uh, who specialize in this genre of music. Tell me a little about uh, the producers for this new album. Yeah, so uh, one of the producers I'll start with is a guy called Dietra Deden, who's from uh, Jakarta in uh, Indonesia, um, who basically is a producer, specializes in sort of electronic music, electronic dance music. Uh, so it's very au fait about, you know, the, 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 the mixing and production phase of any kind of electronic based uh, music uh, came, uh, you know, to us with some really great, interesting ideas, uh, you know, changes, harmonization of vocals, uh, you know, different chord structures. That Silvario from, uh, from uh, uh, Brazil, uh, you know, a great rock guitarist, he contributes uh, a lot on this album. Uh, again, is also a producer by profession. Uh, and he brings in this kind of like, rock production element to it so you know really nice layered guitar riffs guitar solos uh, on a lot of the songs so it's really great to have that kind of blend with a producer with a strong credible background of electronic music and then fusing it with someone else that is, is a great producer in rock music and those two fusing together. Your record company, Europe City Records, are very supportive of this project, but how much influence do they have over sort of your creative process and what gets released? You know, the, the, the influence comes from a, from, from a source and from a good place that, you know, they, as a label, understand the marketplace, they analyze the downloads and streams, of, of, of our back catalog. Um, so, but the collaboration with the, with the label is, is really healthy. Um, you know, I and the others value their input um, and they pretty much leave us to our own devices, but check in occasionally to see how it's all going. And of course, with the social media activity there, you know, they're involved in that as well. So yeah, my trust in them is 100% is, is complete uh, and, and, and likewise for, from, from them to me and the other artists. So it's a great relationship and uh, long may it, uh, long may it continue. Excellent. It's great to have the, the backing of a label who are pretty much 100% behind you because yeah. I work with a lot of producers and every so often they're, they're label, they're nagging this, they're nagging that. So to have a label that are with you 100%, it's fantastic. So I see Amber, Jana and Max are back with their vocal contributions plus an array of global musicians, uh, which is an awesome concept. I'm presuming it's still virtual recording and production. Right, let's listen to a track from the album which features Amber on lead vocals. This is Speak So Loud.
I'd say that's classic Euro electronic pop. Now, you revisit this genre constantly throughout this album. Did the style come about organically, uh, or was it a conscious decision to write and produce in this kind of way? Uh, yeah, I mean, relating back to what I said earlier, I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty much was a conscious decision in terms of keeping, you know, every song in that kind of electronic pop rock, uh, you know, genre. Um, but there's a couple of tracks on there where I thought, right, okay, I'm just going to push every button and make it, you know, the kind of this kind of Euro pop uh, thumping, uh, uh, you know, s- sound. Uh, so to, to Silvario, I see you feature constantly on this album and it's awesome. What has been different for you in recording the material and the style of your playing? And finally, as the second producer, what was your production approach on this album? Hi Andy, how are you? Um, I have been done some really great stuff with Tizri in the past and I'm really glad to be on the new album not only as a, as a musician because uh, I love to play guitar over the the, the Tizri music Terry songs are great uh, but Stein uh, was invited to be also a producer, a mixing engineer and mastering engineer too. So I did, uh, I recorded about six songs and I mixed and mastered and did the production in the another six songs, which is great. Uh, the performances are amazing. The guys are great musicians and singers. Uh, all vocal tracks are super tight, super in tune, uh, amazing performances by all people. And my approach on, on producing is the same as a, a musician, as, as on when I am just recording, because I, I think we must serve the song. If you have, a, a, if you have an idea and you try to, to force it into the song, it will not work. So you must must uh, find out what the song needs and be able to do that to make the song even better than it in than it was when you get the tracks on or before you record your parts and that's my approach i i am really really happy to to be part of it and uh, it's an honor here another track get on it and i'm hearing in this one influences from duran duran love is all around it's why you're here In that now this one to amber what has been your favorite song to record and why i would say i'll never give up um i don't do duets very often at all but i have done a couple of duets on this album which is actually the first for my work with tisray 
Um, and I really, really enjoy doing doing duets, and I like thinking about how I'm going to blend with the other person. And but in terms of the song itself, I really love the softer verse. Uh, this is the first time I've done harmonies with Tizri, I think, and harmonies are really my really my thing. I love them because they add so much more more layering to a to a music composition. But in terms of um, a vibe that I've been going for, I would say I had to go for a bit more of a sensual vibe. It's Terry, Max was unable to join us, as was Janet, but why was it important for you to have a male voice like Max on a couple of the, song, uh, a couple of the songs? What was it that appeals to you? Uh, well, um, I think we're particularly with Max, you know, and, and having a male, uh, what I call a male pop vocal uh, on a couple of songs on the album was really important because, you know, the guy's got a very commercial pop sounding voice, uh, incredible range, and the two songs that, uh, that, uh, that I did, you know, specifically with Max in mind. Uh, you know, he kind of knocked it out of the park every time, you know, because he gives not only sort of real depth and soul to his vocal performance, but it just seems to blend really well. Again, with his kind of the genre of, you know, electronic pop rock. Um, he's incredibly pleased with, with the outcome of it, as, as we all are. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I will continue to use Max as long as he's available, because I think it just gives a different, sort of dynamic to, uh, to the, you know, to the whole album and certainly his contributions, uh, contributions in the last album uh, really added value to the whole kind of um, feel and flavour of the album itself and he's, as I said, not to that the part this time with Mark Mark for this album, so the two songs that he sings on this, uh, sings on this album are uh, now, hearing that, this offers a very strong indication as to what to expect on this album, popular oriented music, uh, with a clear foundation of electronic rock. Any thoughts on the idea for the next album? Uh, will it be another year until we hear new material? And have you got any future singles planned? Uh, well, in terms of future single plans, uh, singles planned, we do have plans to release uh, another single off the album, but it's not quite determined yet. But that will probably be out in July, July August time. Um, and it may be just a, you know, a simple remix version of uh, one of the songs uh, from the album. Um, yeah, so in terms of another album itself, uh, yeah, we're quite happy having a sort of like a, a year gap between each release, uh, which gives us a lot of time for that creative process and, and recording a production process. So yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, um, you know, there's some ideas that are springing off with me and some others about the next project, which will be released probably around about the same time as next year. But some concept that I'm getting quite involved in and quite intrigued by is kind of like this uh, sort of late 60s psychedelic kind of rock, but infused with kind of like an Ibiza 90s uh, dance element to it, which I think will be a really interesting fusion. Uh, and I've already started kind of playing around with that kind of uh, that kind of mix and uh, is producing some really interesting, you know, commercial uh, sounding, um, you know, output. So that's something I'm going to be looking to exploring uh, for the rest of the year um, and, 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 you know, obviously get back uh, the musicians and the vocalists to, again, contribute to that. That sounds like quite a quite a heck of a mix, that actually. I'm quite looking forward to hearing that. Uh, right, let's hear one final track from the album, This Ain't What You Wanted. This track is Loving You Lately. Uh, I wouldn't place this track in the usual genre you record. More of a 70s style soft rock pop feel here. So I wanted a kind of a more of a kind of a laid back kind of approach to this track, but with a, you know, with a foundation of a bit of electronic, but, you know, bringing up sort of elements of like acoustic, uh, acoustic guitar, you know, lead guitar, um, some very sort of like, what I call sort of West Coast uh, kind of vocals, which Amber does a, a great job on. Uh, some interesting twists and turns in terms of, you know, chord progression, uh, particularly uh, in, in the chorus uh, uh, elements of the song. So, yeah, so again, really pleased with the output of this and it's somewhat different from the rest of the tracks, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're kind of known for is this journey of, uh, you know, musical exploration uh, from albums that we do. I stood your ground and more for you Cause you asked, cause you asked me to I shared my thoughts, got deep 
It is, it is quite a journey. Right, finally, Terry, you're coinciding this release of the album with the instrumental version of the songs. Why is this decision? Um, I think it's a great idea, but why? Well, uh, okay, so uh, it's something that we never planned. Uh, it wasn't part of our kind of uh, project strategy, but, you know, as we were in the mixing and production phase of the album, we, we, we were listening to, you know, the songs... Um, uh, you know, stripped of vocals. And we could clearly see that in terms of the creative process, we were doing things very different uh, from the last two albums. And what was uh, what we were hearing were some very strong, uh, you know, melodic, uh, you know, uh, chord progressions and, and interesting uh, variations of, uh, you know, the, the, the music, uh, that you hear on each song. And we just thought, thought, thought that it sounded so compelling. Why not release, uh, you know, to coincide with this uh, this album release, you know, the instrumental uh, version of, of the album. And uh, and then we then we pushed the, you know, pushed it further and thought, well, you know, one of our two most popular streamed and downloaded songs is Sadder Than Strange and Save Our Souls. And we thought, well, why don't we do an instrumental version of that? But slightly remix it and make a, a 2022 version. And so we've included those two songs on that instrumental uh, album as well. So yeah, that instrumental album comes out two days later on the on the 20th of April, uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, this ain't what you wanted on the 18th of April. I mean, there's, there can't be many groups that release two albums in less than a weekend, really. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. Best wishes on the release. This Ain't What You Wanted is released on the 18th of April and the Instrumentals album two days later on the 20th. Both albums will be available on major streaming platforms globally as well. So, guys, check them out. These are going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to getting my copy of these as well. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Andy. Cheers. Not a problem at all. I am. I'm really intrigued by this um, 70s, um, uh, sorry, 60s and um, sort of Ibiza themed stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds yeah, yeah. really I, I, unique. I, I'm quite into my sort of six, 19, late 60s, psychedelic, you know, Velvet Underground, that kind of yeah. thing. Uh, you know, the faces, uh, you know, small faces and stuff and, and, I've, and the birds. And I thought, oh, right. Okay. Uh, this could be, you know, and, and, and fusing that with, sort of this 90s sort of early 90s ibiza club kind of stuff and i thought yeah and what it's early days but what what i'm sort of doing at the moment is like okay i think i might think i might have something here it sounds different because I, I love my sort of Ibiza stuff and the, the new orchestral versions of them as well, which have been out for the last couple of months. I That's really right. enjoy those. Yeah, so to hear this with the, the sort of the, the 60s psychedelic stuff could yeah. be really quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So looking forward to that. Looking forward yeah, good to luck that. with that. I look forward to really hearing cheers. that. Yeah, cheers.